Welcome to MEI Modeling with Algorithms. We're on the topic of graphs and networks 2, minimum spanning trees and shortest paths. And this is video 2.3, minimum spanning trees using Kruskal's algorithm. Okay, so we've already be, been considering the same problem here. Um, all we're doing in this video is thinking about a different approach to it. So if you have a little look at the network there and just have a think about how imagine you've never seen Prim's algorithm just think about how you might do this if it was given to you without without any thought to algorithms as such just how would you find the minimum spanning tree yourself um, what might be the first thing that you would look for um, and I, I guess what what you would look for is the shortest arc and that's exactly what uh, what you would do actually as it turns out in Kruskal's algorithm so rather than worrying about starting with any particular node um, we can see that the shortest arc in this network is this 6. So it's a fair bet that this 6 is going to be included in the minimum spanning tree. Um, what would we do after that? Well, we might look for the next shortest, which would be that one here. Um, notice that those two are not connected to each other yet. Um, but actually, does that really matter? As long as we just keep adding, um, keep adding arcs until we've got the minimum spanning tree, it should all be fine. The only thing, of course, we need to be careful about is forming cycles, because as soon as we form a cycle, then it's no longer a tree. So, um, uh, Joseph Kruskal first came up with the algorithm that we're about to see in 1956. So here is Kruskal's algorithm written out. Um, it is another example of a greedy algorithm. It's just that this time, the thing that we're going straight for is the shortest arc every time. So let's have a go at it. So select the shortest edge in the network. Right then, so if we have a look at all the arcs there, we can see the shortest one is this one. So let's mark that on there like that. And of course, just like we did with prims, we should keep a track of which arcs we've added and what their weight is and the order in which they're added. So we've got LW, that has a weight of five. So what else have we got? Um, this is repeating step two, of course. Uh, we've got now CL. Now it is actually just coincidental that that is keeping a connected tree there. Um, that is CL with a weight of 7. Um, now after that, this is where we need to be careful because the next shortest arc that we can see, of course, is this one. But if I was to add this one, that would create a cycle. So I ignore that and I look at the other ones and the shortest of those is this one which has uh, got a weight of 11. Now as you can see there this is where there's a definite difference from Prim's algorithm because that would never happen in Prim's. We've got a disconnected graph at this point. Uh, we've added SR or RS I should say It is probably a fairly standard convention to write arcs in alphabetical order. There's no particular requirement of that, but um, I'll try to do that wherever possible. Right, okay, so what we're going to add next? Well, we've got uh, a 12, a 12, and a 15. So clearly, it's these two 12s which are the smallest out of the ones that aren't going to form cycles. We can choose either of those. Why don't we just take this one? So that's CS, and that has a weight of 12. And what we can see now, well, we can see two things. Firstly, if you look at this carefully, we can see that all the nodes are now connected. So we've definitely got our minimum spanning tree. And the other thing, of course, is even if we were tempted to add some more arcs, there are no arcs that we could now add without forming a cycle. So we're definitely finished. We do, of course, need to work out the total. Um, so if we add those numbers up, we find that they add up to 35. So here's another example uh, of Kruskal's algorithm. This time I'd like you to try and do this by yourself. So just pause the video now, um, take a screenshot and print it if you need to, or just do it on paper. Um, and see if you get the same result as we do. Again, make sure that you uh, list the arcs in the order that you select them and find the total weight. So this is what you should have ended up with. You can see 
what the tree looks like up there it's highlighted in red and here importantly we've listed the arcs in the order in which they were added and we've written the total there of 174. So just a couple more things to say about Kruskal's algorithm. Firstly, um, it essentially can't be used if you've got a matrix or a, a table. Um, you might want to have a little moment to think about why that would at the very least be very difficult. Uh, and, and of course the, the answer is that it's difficult to spot when you've made a cycle on a, on a table. So let's talk about some of the common errors that occur in this method so you can watch out for them and not make them yourself. Um, forgetting to list the order, again it's really important this because otherwise no one can tell that you've actually carried out the algorithm correctly. Um, accidentally forming cycles, so either just by not spotting when you've made one or feeling like you've got to keep going even though you've connected everything. And finally just a brief comparison between the two algorithms that we've now seen for finding the minimum spanning tree, so Prim's versus Kruskal's, um, they're both greedy algorithms um, and they're both guaranteed to find the minimum spanning tree but they will look different along the way because they, uh, the arcs will be added in different order. Um, of course you may well find that there are more than one, there's more than one possible spanning tree if you've got arcs which are the same weight, we've talked about that issue already. Um, of course with prims you're, you've always got a tree, it's always connected all the way through whereas with cross it can be disconnected until it's until it, until the end. Um, as we mentioned it really is important with cross to keep checking that you're not creating cycles. It's, it's actually easier with prims not to do that because you're adding new nodes all the time. Um, and as we've mentioned it's difficult at least to use cross using a matrix or a table. Uh, and for that reason, actually, if you're going to be doing this sort of thing on a computer, you'd be much more likely to do it with prims. So that concludes video 2.3. The next video will be 2.4, Shortest Paths.